100% fake free. This is the Robbie Cruz show and we're live from my garage. And famous people are gonna sit right there. Nice. 90% of all single use plastic goes to landfill or ends up in our oceans. Unsmother nature, let it breathe. On the show, somebody that's qualified for the Olympics, when you asked her when she was just eight years old, she said she wanted to go to the Olympics, even though she might not have known what that meant at that stage, but she was supposed to be an incredible swimmer. And uh, she's on the Robbie Cruz Show. We're very excited to welcome Kayleen Corbett. Thank you for yeah. having me. It's so good to have you here. I actually Sorry. spoke to your manager, Henrietta Gravenberg, who's yes. a very close friend of the show, a close friend of mine as well. Uh, and may she recover incredibly quickly. She just uh, recently had a back operation. Yes. But I spoke to her and, and, and asked her this little girl from Hartswater. Yeah. They came from this little place <laughs> in the Northern Cape. And now you're going to the Olympics this year. Um, yes, yeah, so it definitely wasn't originally planned like that, I won't say that it, that it was always the dream, but it wasn't planned exactly like that. It's very exciting, um, yeah, so at first it got cancelled last year, which was mm, horrible. Which sucked, yeah. yeah. This whole COVID thing, but yeah, I mean, hopefully it looks like there's sunshine at the end of the tunnel, and we're going ahead full blast for this year Olympic Games, which is so exciting, mm. yeah. But let's take it back, before we chat Olympics, it was a dream, it started somewhere, and it was back in Hartswater, that's where you grew yeah. up, it's a yeah. tiny little place, so yeah. I went and Googled it, it's like, they give you like this little footprint, like yeah. this little mining kind of stuff. There's and absolutely like, nothing like it really is like absolutely nothing but um on, honestly the best place to grow up in like it was amazing i had the best childhood there um grew up with so many friends you had any land spiel like <laughs> it was the best um sl swam in the dam um yeah i mean it's it's a place where you really could explore being a child properly yeah it's not like Growing up in Pretoria. Yeah, that or was the VR. Yeah, it's, not, it's not farm life, it's not like that community. That's yes, all, like, yeah. Everybody in Hartswater knows each other. Knows everyone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How is family life for you? Is family an important thing to you? Incredibly. I'm very family orientated. Um, I have a little sister, she's nine, Nicole, and then my brother is turning 20 this year, so he's 19. Um, and yeah, like we're very close as siblings, as mom and dad, everyone, Oma, Opa, everyone mm. is extremely Tight close. Mix, yeah. yeah, we all know each other's stories. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something that is my foundation. My roots are found in both my religion and in family. Very important things to me. Yeah. And sport in Artwater, that surely wasn't a massive thing. I mean, you were probably the best from an early age. You know. Um, you were, you yeah. wouldn't believe it, but I really wasn't. Um, so I had to work very hard. Um, but unfortunately. The thing is with growing up in Hartswater and trying to start from there and having this big dream from a little age, um, my parents had to give up a lot. So unfortunately we had to move to PE, um, business opportunities and obviously for my swimming as well. Um, yeah, so we ended up moving to PE when I was 11. Um, so yeah, a lot of things changed dramatically <laughs> at that age. <laughs> was, was that a big shock for you? Because I read the story and uh the fact that you uprooted yourself and then, well, yourself, your parents did, you moved to PE yeah. and you left like the rest of the family there, you know, Oman, Opa and Yes, oh, yeah, so that was terrible, but being like the close-knit family that we are, we all ended up being in PE, so the whole family's in PE now, oh, great. and yeah. then I decided to move to Pretoria, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it really is a way of life almost, um, just keeping everyone so close knit and close together. Yeah. Did, did you have to travel a lot for galas? I remember the age group galas yeah. that you swam back in the day at Hillcrest in, the, in Pretoria. Yeah. You'd get there, you'd be sitting the whole day, wait for your event, oh, it's yeah. my event, go ahead. I in mean, the queue. yes. You had to like, travel for those. I mean, like for, to Uppington and yeah. Lum and how yeah. did that work? So with Hartswater, you, didn't, you couldn't race a gala close. Yeah. I mean, the closest was Kimberley, <laughs> which is like. <laughs> Like it's like an hour and something drive I think and it was a lot of hard work like really traveling a lot like making sure that I get to race against people older than me people better than me um, yeah so it was a lot of work from a little age um, knowing that you have to give up your weekends um, go for these things that you were hoping would one day lead to the ultimate goal which is the Olympics yeah running was never your strong suit though <sighs> 
How did you, you know? You, you read you about it, didn't you? Well, you're a runner. That's how it works. Like your mom, your mom even said she's oh, not a cross mom. country wasn't your big thing. You know, she never told me yeah. that until after. Uh, okay. I wish she told me before <laughs> because she literally before said to me. Before you pursued it. Yeah. Yes, because I was like, I can do everything. I did tennis, like mini cricket. I broke my collarbone playing like touch rugby with the boys. So I did everything mm. I possibly could. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah, so then only after my mom said, you run like a frog, yeah. I think you need to stop. And I was like, okay, mom. <laughs> that's when it hit home. That's yeah, that's when I knew running is not my strong suit. Did, did you always picture yourself being a professional sportsman or was swimming something that actually clicked for you that you thought like, well, I am quite good at this, you know, I can, I can pursue this. Yes, I think with the whole, like, I had to choose. I'd, we got to an age where I think I was 14 and I was still doing netball and tennis and everything. And then and you were good at it as well. I mean, you were, you were playing first team. I wasn't terrible, yeah. So I was, I was pretty, like, okay doing all of these things. And then it, you hit an age and then it's like you need to choose now. Like, either you invest all your time in swimming or you start you know pursuing other things or you start doing academics or something um yeah and then we chose swimming and yeah it hasn't failed me yet <laughs> it hasn't you've been i mean before we get to the amount of medals that you've won in your lifetime which is I don't know, fingers <laughs> or toes or a lot of us do um you actually you, at 15 i think it was you almost decided oh, i'm not going to do i don't know I, you know yeah i don't know if this is for me and it's like a yes. make or break time period for you yes i think when girls start going through puberty especially in swimming um you would know that either your body adapts and you start going faster or you need to change something and then go faster or you just hit rock bottom and you need to like end up stopping like it's terrible and i would really encourage all girls like i'm very passionate about women swimming and especially young girls in the in the industry and I really do want them to carry on through that because there is light at the end of the tunnel but for me it was a place where I kept getting medals and I kept like proving myself um, to be a part of a South African team um, and just not making it not making it not making it and then I decided well if I don't make it this year I was 15 at the time which was 2015 um, I decided that if I don't make it this year, I need to stop. Like then I need to start focusing on academics or at least tone down on the swimming and then decide on what to do. And then I finally like made my first national team and I was so happy. Was like, that when you went to the yeah. youth, uh, Commonwealth. Youth, co youth Commonwealth Games? Yeah, yeah youth Commonwealth Games. And then, Games. then, it, then it was it uh, yes. 18 that you made? Yeah, uh, so I made, I made the Youth Commonwealth Games in 2015 and Oh, it was an ama like amazing like, experience. We went to Samoa. It's like a small island off like um, New Zealand, amazing. which is yeah, blue waters, like the most amazing travel experience ever. Um, and yeah, I ended up doing quite well, and I got a couple of medals there. I saw so, it, yeah. yeah, two silvers as well. Can yeah, two silvers and two bronze. How yeah. amazing! <laughs> Where do you keep all your medals? You've won so many medals. Like oh. by the time I was, I was going through your CV, and like by the time I got to like the juicy bits of who you are. I was like, oh, one more. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I think now knowing how much it meant to me back then, I actually started giving some of them away. Um, yeah, because I think it, it means a lot more to little girls having getting a medal somewhere because it le meant a lot to me. But now it's it doesn't mean as much, but it's still it's always an honor getting a medal anywhere. Yeah. You, you speak about puberty and nice and openly I like it yeah. and, and the effects that it has on a woman's body yes. you know as a sports star compared to like what a man doesn't have to go through yeah. I mean we just the testosterone just increases or it doesn't and then you, you know? guys get better yes, <laughs> and that's it you know so that's something that is passionate that you're passionate about is also is yes. women and, and, yeah. and, and kids as well that's yes your, yeah. so that's so, something that people need to speak yeah. about um, I definitely agree, agree like especially women and girls being educated about their bodies and puberty and what happens in your body and how everything changes and um, something that's really important and close to my heart is children because um, I'm studying foundation phase education at the moment at Tux oh, wow. um, and yes I, can, I think it's really important for young women to know that these things happen to all of us and we all go through them and to get to know your body and know what what is the limit and when to stop and especially being a, a like a proper like a a 
performance swimmer and being like really hectically pushing your body knowing when to stop and when is enough enough as well and you're only 21 years old i can't believe yes. it you look like it's this old head screwed onto these shoulders of yours <laughs> oh, but shame. you're busy studying at the moment foundation education uh, yeah foundation phase education foundation phase education yes. oh. is that something that you're probably going to pursue after your swimming or during your swimming even i think is it something you want? yes it's something i definitely want to work with kids um it wasn't my first option like i really wanted to go into um, special needs children and all that kind of stuff like um, speech therapy that was my first go-to thing that I wanted to study if I was grade 10 and you had to ask me this question um, but unfortunately it's a lot of work to couple that with a lot of swimming being a professional sports it's sport. yeah I can't I can't do both so then I had to choose and it ended up being still pursuing my absolute passion and that's children and you no know, i'm going to do courses and stuff after and definitely work with special needs children one day take me through your day how tough is it to, be, <laughs> to become an olympian the story behind it um well it definitely didn't i struggled a lot yeah. this last couple i'll be completely honest with you struggled a lot this last couple of years um from about 2018 when I moved to Pretoria to um, join Rocco Mehring and It was incredible, I can't believe yes. we actually spoke about it. I was coached by her coach. <laughs> yeah. Obviously it didn't work wonders for me, but <laughs> here we you are. You will work wonders yeah, now. No, incredible, Rocco, big shout out to him. Yes, yeah. Yeah, He's um, doing an amazing job. You came up to specialize with him. Yes, mm. I definitely, I moved from PE mm. to come and swim with him. Um, and join his program and it really was it worked wonders for me especially um, I joined the program and first went through a little bit of a dip and then your day would start out with either gym or swim um, breakfast before that then another second breakfast after um, and then, yeah, a couple, just making sure that you see it, have a team around you, such as a dietitian, a physio. Um, yeah, the most important things like a gym trainer and all those people, like a psychologist as well, which I work very close with. Uh, making sure that you see those people on a, a like weekly basis. Um, then also like a really important, that's really important, really, really important to me is knowing that you have a great foundation and support system around you, which is outside of the professionals that help you, which is either your family or the people, your friends close to you and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And family, what uh, you, you, you say it means a lot to you, but are they very like supportive in the sense that they're around the pool, they're watching you, it's... SMSs, it's this, you, it's good luck. So. Yes, yeah, definitely. I think um, my gran has prayed for me more than anyone in this whole world. <laughs> and they do, don't they? And <laughs> oh, yeah, so I think it's really important to have those people, yeah. And to have those people support your dream and when you feel like you can't go anymore, then they're ready to go even more. So, I mean, yeah, that's why it's so important to have these people is to know that they're there through everything what, at what stage did you did you know like did it click for you that I can go to the Olympics I, I as Katie Corbett can uh, represent South Africa <laughs> to represent South Africa and to go to the Olympics I think is a little bit different true, um, true. It's a, the, the one is way harder but <laughs> yeah. it's also just as ama like amazing I think the just to be a part of the South African team we have such a great culture in South Africa with sports um, to be part of the team and to be there on like a world champs or commonwealth tour or even world student games um, is also amazing like achievement and then to step it up a little bit more and go to the olympics is definitely something that i always wanted like from like a little girl at age eight you would think that you would always want it and then getting to the point of like i think i think i believed when i could go to the olympics was like really, really, I could do this was only in Feb 2019. Oh, wow. Where I was like, oh, I really can do this. I, th I think I really can go for this, yeah. But it's always a dream and you really always believe deep down in your heart. Like it's always rooted, that dream's always rooted inside of you. 
So yeah, like no matter what, you always hope and believe that you can do it. Can you believe we're here? Can you believe we're in the year? I mean, it was supposed to be last year, yeah. but now we're in 2021 and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Plot twist, last plot year twist. was. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> like, I mean, what yeah. would life be if it wasn't for plot twist? And especially Maybe. you guys, like yeah. uh, I say you guys, I mean, like sportsmen and women everywhere, it's, it, you guys learn how to deal with things. You have to, because I mean, yeah. in your life, that's, you still got to perform to your peak always. Yes. You know? So I think, like, how do you do that? Is, is yeah. that the support system? Is that, is that your, in your mind? Or? Yeah, I think there's a lot of coping mechanisms in place as well for especially things like this. When something happens and it doesn't go according to plan, you definitely find a way out and you need to teach yourself these coping, coping mechanisms, especially with someone like a psychologist or your family members or people who really are wise in that, like, side of them because I'm not <laughs> so I really have to take small bits from everyone and then teach yourself how to cope bigger better how to be better and at the end of the day just be a better person coming out of swimming and I also think that after swimming well in swimming you feel so much pressure and you feel so much um, anxiety and stress and all that kind of stuff I don't think you'll ever feel that kind of pressure outside of it so once you get to like being in a job and working towards something else after swimming, you, you know how to cope with these things and you know how to work through them without breaking down. <laughs> True. And you've met amazing people. You also met Penny Haynes, who's one of yes, your yeah. heroes, yes. hero wins. Yeah. Yes, yeah. She's, she's incredible. Amazing. But I think you were 13 when you yeah. met her. The first yes. Time. So I met her for the first time and silly me would go and tell her that I'm going to the Olympics in two years. Of course. Of and course. I'm like, I was like all convinced I'm going to the Olympics in two years. And I think Oh, she just kind of like shrugged it off. She was like, sure you are. Like, well done, girl. You, you, don't get you keep dreaming big. <laughs> um, yeah, and then ended up only qualifying four or five years later. So, yeah. Still. Well, it's still not bad. You're still there. You weren't even 20 when you qualified. Yeah. So at 19, it's, it's 19, not, uh, not yeah. bad at all. What, what goals do you set for yourself this year? Is it uh, you're going over there just to... I mean, represent us just yes. because you made it. You made the yes. Olympics. Yeah, it was very unexpected. I really wasn't planning on going to the 2020 or 2021 Olympics. Um, I was planning on only going in 2024, and my whole year and everything was set out for 2024. Worked around that. Yeah, Worked was that. we're not going. We not if we go, great. Yeah. But we're going for 2024, and um, by the grace of God, I ended up qualifying, wow. and yeah, just. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> like I said, the rest is history. No yeah. Cares, you know. but that's really yes. amazing. I, I don't know if you saw this when you walked in. I'm not yes. plastic. It's a lot of people yeah. that we get on the show, or actually every single person we get on the show, we get on for a reason. We put you through filters, you know, which is, cool. is, is this person not plastic or not? And yeah. I just loved your story. I really did. But Thank what you. does that mean to you if you see that? Uh, I think... I'm not plastic means a lot of things. I think it, to me personally, I would definitely say that it's just none of us are plastic, but sometimes we are, if that makes sense. I think just um, deep down inside, we're not plastic and we need to make sure that every day we're not like every day. You shouldn't put up a facade or be someone who you're not and really work towards, towards, work towards, <laughs> um, work towards the person that you want to become one day um, and not drift off to what you have in mind and who you really are and just stick to your core values that, yeah. Is How are you only 21 years old? <laughs> How is this possible? Jeez, like, this yeah. must be a lie. Come on, man. Then uh, what song do you use to pump yourself up when you're going to go... You're at a gala, it's just before you get onto the blocks, you've got your AirPods in or your, I don't know yes. what headphones you're wearing. <laughs> do, do, oh, do. Dare what I do say you shadow this? box to? It okay. has to be Eminem. Okay. Really? So, yes. Are you well, joking? To you like a so many points yes. in my book there. Eminem is like, like the there's man. no way yeah. that you cannot get pumped up Child. before something. Like, you're ready to fight someone. My I can't palms fight. My arms are sweaty now, my knees yes. weak, arms are heavy. Oh, <laughs> oh you that. see. What's your favorite song? To like a lapse, definitely. Yeah. Oh, look at you, you're such a gangster. I know, I just Originally from Hartswater, the Northern Cape, and she listens to M and Ed. How's that? I think that's the only, like, yeah. That, okay, but then it, it ranges from like M and M 
to like Justin Bieber, where I am a die-hard Justin Bieber fan. There's nothing wrong, like, though. Justin is incredible. He's an incredible back. artist. <laughs> I will say that I'm not plastic. I can say that Justin Bieber is cool. He, he's amazing, and I really enjoy that you don't judge me for I that. I, like, I don't judge. You see. <laughs> I can't. You're 21. You're going to the Olympics this year. If anything, I'm only going to ask for tickets. That's it. <laughs> Please say, yeah. So where can we follow you? Because I'd love to follow the whole story. I'd love every single viewer to also follow the oh, whole story. Yeah. Because, um, uh, yeah, Kayleen Corbett, where you at? Yeah, so Instagram, definitely Kayleen Corbett, just like that, at Kayleen Corbett. Um, then Facebook, I don't have a Facebook yet, but it'll come at some point. Um, yeah, we're trying to organize my whole Instagram and you got social to, media. You've got to be busy with that thing, because yeah. people are going to be looking for you. People are going to be, <laughs> and I mean, you're a marketable human being. So oh, you got to take it and you got to run with it. Shots. No, yeah. <laughs> and you're working with a cool team. I've got to explain that. Yeah. Like, I mean, the woman that's behind you. She, first of all, she loves swimmers, yeah. uh, which is great, and that was one mm. way. And, and when we're yeah. speaking about it, I mean, she's just so passionate about you and what you're going to do. Oh, she's so incredible. Think, yeah. She sort of more. That's what I call her. Oh, okay. She's all like right. my mom in Pretoria. Yeah. So she's my mother in Pretoria. Um, yeah, I'm dating her son, and <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So she's literally like my plus one to everything. Yeah. You gotta look after yourself. Don't let the world change you. Don't make it. Don't let it make you hard in any yeah. form whatsoever. Thank you. And thanks for visiting. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for Please promise me, me one thing though: yeah. that when you've been to the Olympics and you come back, you'll come say hello. Of course yeah. I will. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Future <laughs> Olympian Kayleen Corbett on the Rodi Show. Thank thanks you. for coming. Thank Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Happy days. I'm Kayleen Corbett and I'm not plastic. <laughs> one more, one more for luck. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back uh, to the Robbie Cruz Show. This is Fred from Food 2050. He was on episode three as well. Thanks again for joining us. I see we've converted you to I'm not plastic. It's a beautiful shirt, sir. This is by choice. I like Robbie, that. And I'm like glad to that. join your team and to be here today. Oh, it's amazing. Thank it's, you. It's great to have you part of the team. Uh, just to recap for somebody that might not have watched episode three, what is Food 2050 quickly? Food 2050 is a solutions based company. We look at a problem and we saw one in the food industry. So I can tell you a bit more about that as we go along. But we, we physically are a company that could design for a solution, fabricate, supply, operate, maintain and service plant and equipment in the industrial sector. That's what we do and we are. And we effectively spoke about it, how I understand it, is the food that we waste, the 10 million tons per annum, yeah. that goes to landfill, that we're not you know, using, and that it creates a methane gas instead of the CO2 and the H2O. H, that's right? That's correct. Right, yes, see, so even CO2 I'm learning. CO2 and H2O. There we go, so yes. I'm learning. Uh, but explain <clears throat> to me a little bit more. How does that uh, take, take me in depth? Okay, so uh, we use microbes. Microbes do the job. It basically composts material like it has been for millions of years. Um, select microbes are used. They call thermophilic uh, microbes. They love energy and as you put energy into it, you enhance the process of composting, which we haven't covered is that our process can actually compost material within a matter of 24 to 48 hours. Whereas if you look at normal composting, anaerobic composting, producing methane, all the bads, takes you about 30 days. So it's enhanced composting. It's uh, under favorable process conditions and we control those inputs in order to uh, then give us a desirable outcome. That's why we need control. It's a process con with its controls and its, its design parameters. Because if it's uncontrolled, like you mentioned uh, on episode 3 as well, it's, there's no catalyst, there's no, nothing that's happening, it's just there, you know, there's nothing that's, that's adding value yes. to it, to yeah. control. I, I like it. Well, we, we create the problem and we expect Mother Nature to, fix to sort us. of fix or nurse it, uh, where in our case, we create a problem, but we also create the solution. And, and, and all of us have to sort of get to that point where we realize that we have to do something about the food. So the food that goes to waste, about 5 million tons goes to landfill at the moment. And we don't have very good data in South Africa. A lot of people have done research. The CSIR have done some good work to give quantum to these, to these uh, uh, values and figures, but it's a serious problem worldwide. 
And so the cups we <coughs> drank out last week, they are fully compostable. It was little coffee cups. We'll uh, show you a little video as well of how the machine works, the Food 2050 machine, which I think is incredible. It's really cool. I can't believe that that cup becomes basically soil again. That's what it, it's 100% compostable. We took those, we put it through the machine and that's what happened. It does, yes. And uh, we'll, we'll post you guys with a bit of uh, videos and, and photos as evidence of that. But it, it really does, it does the trick. Within 24 hours, you don't see the cups, they disappear, it becomes compost. And the amazing thing is uh, with these control parameters, even though the food that you put into these machines Though the consistency of what you put in change, as you know, today we eat chicken, tomorrow it's beef, and, and as we go along and put You're different... You're not going to separate veg, all of that. No, you, you just throw it in. Um, when the machine performs well, it has this distinctive smell of compost. Now, the, the compost that we, you know, refer to as a, you know, it's a bit of a nasty a smell. Potent smell yes. This actually smells like fresh tobacco that you buy from the tobacconist and you open that bag, it's got a fragrance almost. That's how it smells. Day after day after day, it's a controlled environment. And uh, then obviously you can use the compost and you can uh, plant material into it. So you can't use it in its pure form. It's very concentrated, but you have to work it in you know, with soil like normal compost. But needless to say, so and I don't <clears> need to interrupt you, but that is still, even though it's potent, like you say, it, it gets mixed. So it is going back into the earth. Yes. It's not, that's the, that's the main point. Absolutely. Place, yeah. All the energy that we wasted uh, through, you know, digestion of sunbeam and water and nutrients and forming these plants and vegetables that now goes to waste, all that energy is still contained. And what the composter does, it basically concentrates all that energy um, into a mass, 15% of what you put in. So you put in 100 kilograms, you end up with 15 kilograms of concentrated nutrients that you can then provide back into the system. And that's what it does. 100% of what you put in, you can then utilize afterwards. That's what the machine does. And that's not landfill. That's not going to a bad place. And no. look, uh, Fred brought us something for show and tell as well. <laughs> it's Food 2050. That's a nice little, I'll show you, we'll get a nice little shot of that. But if you look there, that's some of the actual soil that we've mixed with that. And that's coriander that's growing in there. So those coffee cups, mugs, those uh, compostable coffee cups that we had, we put them through the machine and this is what came out. This is physically what we've now mixed with the soil. We'll post a bunch of videos for you because I think it's really cool. But Fred, thank you very much for coming out. I think we are still going to do a lot with Food 2050. And uh, we look forward to promoting you guys. Look forward to, uh, like I said, working with you and to see where we can take this. Because I think this is what the future holds. This, this is, is the future. Yeah, this is one step closer to saving Mother Nature. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for coming. Thank on. you so much, Robbie. Privilege. Privilege.